Let's finish our discussion of perceiving people by having a quick summary, a quick bottom line. Remember, we form impressions of people in one of two basic ways. One way is really quick and essentially automatic, and it's based on relatively superficial things sometimes, like physical appearance, um, preconceptions we have of people, cognitive heuristics, which remember are just rules of thumb, and it's almost always based on minimal behavioral evidence because it's quick, it's relatively automatic. But of course, sometimes we spend a little bit more time and our processing is more careful, more mindful. And this is when we're forming an impression that's based on careful observations of behavior, a logical, rational analysis of the individual, of their specific behavior, and also the situation that they're in. And remember, we were referring to that distinction as system one and system two processing. And this uh, diagram right here shows that process, the distinction between those processes relatively well. So how accurate are our impressions? It's kind of tough to answer that question specifically, but I can give you some basic summary. We're accurate enough in general to establish and maintain relationships that allow us to lead happy, productive lives. So, I mean, in general, we do well enough. But remember, we talked about several problems. For example, we're overly influenced by superficial social information. You know, someone could be wearing the wrong clothes, according to my own perspective, and I'm going to view them really negatively. We know that's superficial, and we know that can lead to serious bias. We often fail to fully appreciate situational constraints and forces. Remember, what's in front of us is the person acting, and that's the primary piece of information that we're using to draw impressions of people. But we're not necessarily fully appreciating why they're acting the way they are, because sometimes situational forces are very powerful, and we don't see them. We cannot reliably distinguish between truths and lies. So, of course, in order to make sense of people, we need to be able to believe what they're saying. And we know that sometimes people are not saying truthful statements. We often focus on the wrong cues. We've learned that. If we're not able to distinguish between truths and lies, that's going to be a serious limitation in making sense of other people. We often rely on mental shortcuts that lead to a host of biases. We've talked about a variety of cognitive heuristics, which allow us to process information very quickly. Um, but sometimes that really comes at a cost. We know that our existing beliefs overly influence our social just, uh, judgments, and that can lead to confirmation biases, self-fulfilling prophecies, and that's a real problem. When our initial beliefs color the information that comes next, when our initial beliefs are held so dearly that we often are unwilling to give them up, that just shows an inflexibility in our thought that can really lead to problems when we're trying to make sense of people. And in general, also, we have little awareness of these limitations that we just discussed. And that leads us to be overconfident in our social perceptions and judgments of other people. So we think we're good, um, but when we look closely and when we look at the, the literature and cognitive psychology and social psychology and other areas of psychology, we realize that we need some help. Um, but as we study these things and we learn about these things, of course, we are less likely to fall prey to those biases. Now, there are some reasons to be optimistic. The more experience we have with each other, the more accurate our judgments are. So if I know you well, and I can now read you reasonably well, then I can make sense of you reasonably well, at least compared to other people that I have less experience with. So that's one general cue that we should get to know people a little bit better, spend a little bit more time um, truly understanding where they come from. Our global judgments of others, so thinking about how others behave across a variety of situations, they're really not very good, but our specific predictions of how other people will behave in our presence tends to be better. And that makes sense because um, what goes on with another person right in front of us really affects us. So we probably pay more attention and we're simply more motivated to be correct. Uh, and speaking of motivation, when we're motivated by concerns of accuracy, like when we really want to be fair to someone, when we really want to understand someone, 
Um, when we want to be open-minded, uh, that's often the situation when we're dealing people uh, with, of minority groups. And when we're thinking to ourselves that we know that we have biases or we know that other people have biases and we don't want to treat that person in that way. So we might be motivated to be particularly open-minded. Well, in those situations, um, we tend to form more accurate impressions. And uh, finally, some people are simply more accurate than others in their social perceptions and judgments. And that leads us to conclude that we should study those people. You know, we, we should figure out what's going on with these individual differences. Because if we can figure out why some people are more accurate than others, then of course we can teach that. So there are some reasons to be optimistic. Well, that's it for this section. So stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.